Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today I'm going to be doing a video answering a subscriber's question. He is presently running Ubuntu and he wants to install Manjaro Deepin. So we will be going over the install, a general overview, and things you must do after you install it to your system. But before we get started, please do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel on Patreon, those links will be in the description below. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to actually get the Manjaro Deepin ISO. So we will go ahead and open Firefox, which I'm already at Manjaro's website, which is manjaro.org. I'll make sure I put the link in the description below. You want to click on Try Manjaro, and it'll bring up the official releases, which is XFCE, KDE Plasma, and GNOME. What you want to do is go up top to the bar, go to Additions, and go down to Community, and then over to the right and down to Deepen. Now, if you want to install Cinnamon, Budgie, i3, Mate, any flavor of Manjaro, this tutorial will work. So let's go ahead and open up Deepen. What you'll want to do is go over here where it says Get Deepen, click on it. Now, if you're going to download it by torrent, all you got to do is click right here where it says Download Torrent, or you can do a standard download right here. I've already done that, so go ahead and do that. Now that you have done that, what you'll need to do is go to Synaptic Package Manager or your software center, store, whatever you have on your system, go ahead and open it up. You'll want to download an application that can write ISOs to USB. So now you can pick whatever you want to, but whatever you're going to want is just something to write an ISO image to a USB image writer, USB pen drive maker, Belina Etcher. If you close out of this, go back into Firefox and look up Belina Etcher. Just basically says flash flawless right here. It recognizes that I'm Linux 64. You can run it as an app image. You can do whatever you need to do right here. Just download it and get it installed on your system. Once you have that, what you'll want to do is go over to your files. Make sure that you don't have anything in your files that hasn't been backed up or that you don't need to be deleted, that you can dump it on a USB or back it up to the cloud. Now, once you've verified all your folders are clear, it's time to actually write the image to a USB. So what you'll want to do is come over here, look up the application that you downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and look up the one I downloaded, which is ImageWriter, OpenSUSE. It's going to say insert a USB, which we will do right now. It automatically recognized it. Let's go ahead and make that a little bigger. Now, you're going to want to open up the folder where you downloaded your ISO to, which is right there. Just click it, left click, hold it, drag it, drop it and you're ready to go now you may have different steps on whatever writer you downloaded just follow the steps make sure it recognizes your flash drive and make sure you get the right iso once you have that all you have to do is click right go ahead and do that right now and then we'll pick up after that okay now that you're finished writing your iso to the usb what you'll want to do is you'll want to go over go back to firefox and look up the hotkey, hotkey, boot, menu. Let's say you have an Acer. Then you can look it up. How to get into the boot menu. F12, F8, F10, whatever it might be. Okay. Now you might have an issue to where when you try to boot into it, it won't let you. You'll get a red flag. Then what you'll have to do is look up BIOS. And what you'll have to do in BIOS is go in and turn secure boot off doesn't affect your system, turn secure boot off, save it, exit, then boot back into the boot menu, and you'll be good to go. Once you do that, you will see the following screen. This screen will pop up right here. Make sure the language is correct, which it should be. Boot with open source drivers and boot with proprietary drivers. This will be your biggest decision right now. Are you somebody that believes in true open source? Then you would boot with open source. If you're somebody that's running an NVIDIA video card and you want the proprietary drivers, you would drop down and put the proprietary drivers here. Now, I will explain something. Whatever you boot into here is what gets installed. But for right now, boot into what you're comfortable with. So go ahead. And once you get done booting the USB, this is what you should see. You are at the Manjaro Deepin desktop. Now, what you're going to want to do, at letting me know that updates are available. This is the welcome screen. We can look at that more after you install it. So we will close out of that. 
And if you're ready to do the install, just go up here and click on Install Linux. The first thing it's going to tell you is welcome to Manjaro 21.1.2. But what you'll want to do is just make sure you've got the right language here and click Next. Then you're going to have your location. Pick where that is. Click Next. And then, of course, your keyboard. How do you want it set up? Default English. Go ahead and pick out what you need to do there. Now, when you get to here, you're going to want to erase disk. This will delete all the data currently present on the selected storage device. If you are running 8 gigabytes of RAM or less, you'll want to add swap. Now, if you're running on a desktop, go ahead and do swap with no hibernate. And if you are running a laptop, you're going to want to do swap with hibernate. So, desktop, no hibernate, swap with hibernate for laptops. And then, of course, you can pick out what file system you want to use. If you want to use better FS, butter FS, whatever you call it, or you want to stay with EXT4, you can do that. Then you go next, and it'll ask you what your full name is. Go ahead and put your name, identify your computer, password, this and that and the other. Uh, eBuzz Central. Just go ahead and put that info in there. Go ahead. If you want to log in automatically, you can. I don't recommend it, but I'm going to go ahead and use the same password for the administrator account. Click Next. Over here, you have a choice of picking an Office Suite to install off the bat, which is no Office Suite, LibreOffice, or free Office. That's up to you if that's something you want to do. Next. Then it will give you a summary of all the changes it's getting ready to make to your system. Once you agree with those changes and everything is correct, you're going to want to click install and it will bring up a message saying, are you sure you want to install? You click sure I want to install. So do that right now and then we will follow up when you're done. Okay, now that your install is complete, you've restarted and logged into your desktop. This is what you should see. The install buttons are gone from up here and you have your desktop and you're being told that you have updates available. And that's the first thing we want to do. Let's go ahead and go over here and you want to look up software. Add and remove software. Go ahead and open that up. Now, don't do anything yet. What you want to do is come to these three dots over here. Click on those three dots and go down to preferences. Go to third party and you want to enable AUR support. So go ahead and click that on. And you want to check for updates. Go ahead and click that on. Once you're done with that, go back over to general. Scroll down and you will see official repositories. Use mirrors from. Leave that on worldwide and click refresh mirrors. This will take approximately three to five minutes. What it is basically doing is refreshing all your mirrors, your download locations from around the world. So that when you do install software or install updates, you're getting them from the best locations with the highest speeds. Once that is done, you want to close out, go over to updates. It will scan and tell you all of these updates are available. So go ahead and update your system now. Run down, click apply. That will take anywhere from five to 10 minutes. Once that is finished, you can close out. And now you have a Deepin Manjaro install, completely up to date and ready for you to customize any way you see fit. First thing I'm gonna do is right click and change my wallpaper. There's one I'm kind of fond of. I'm gonna go ahead and put that one on. Now, if you do notice, you have quite a bit of software already installed by default, okay? If you want to use the Deepin Mail, Deepin Mail works great with Microsoft, works great with Yahoo, works great with a lot of email accounts, but you do have an issue with Google Mail. As with other Linux mail clients, Google doesn't play real nice with some of those. So I'm going to show you how to fix that real quick. What you'll want to do is go ahead and open your browser, Firefox, and just do a search. Secure Apps Google. And it'll bring up support, google.com. So click on that. It'll let you know right here, less secure apps in your Google account. If less secure app access is on for your account, you can scroll down here and it'll say turn off less secure app access. What it'll ask you to do is make sure that you're signed in. Let me go ahead and sign in with an account real quick. Now I have signed in 
So what we want to do is less secure app access. Click on that. I'm using a different email address than the one I have this turned on for, but it says allow less secure apps off. If you want to allow them, all you got to do is click that on and then your deep in mail will work or evolution or Geary, depending on what email client you're using that's giving you the problem with logging in, go over there, turn that on and you're good to go. So let's close back out of that. And then when you go to the mail, you can put in an email address. And it will start populating your mail. And then you can add all the accounts you need to add. And you'll be good to go. You got settings, you've got theme, you can go to a dark theme. But that's how you set that up. So we're going to go ahead and close out of that. And then you can just start downloading the software that you want or removing some of the software you don't want. You do have add and remove software and you do have an app store with Manjaro Deepin. You can go in here and add software right here, however you want to. And it's letting you know updates are available. I'm going to go ahead and quit that. But this is where you start basically customizing the operating system to the way you want it. Now, if you're installing this on a laptop, you might have some issues with your microphone. Manjaro sometimes picks the wrong default, or let me correct that, Pulse Audio sometimes selects the wrong default microphone on a laptop. What I'm going to do is at the end of this video, I will pin a video that covers that an easy way to fix it. There's a couple things you need to do now. What you will notice is when you restart your system or you first boot into your system, it'll stop on a Manjaro page and say, Manjaro, getting ready to boot and have a countdown. Well, you can get rid of that and let's bypass that. So go to terminal. Once you open terminal, just type this in, sudo nano slash etc slash default slash grub. And it'll bring this up. Now what you'll want to do is just arrow down to where it says timeout. And instead of five, make that zero and then it will no longer pause there. And to save that, you'll just control O and it'll say file to write to, just hit enter, it's done. That's change and you won't have to worry about that pause anymore. To exit, just control X and you're done. If you're somebody that uses a firewall, you can go ahead and configure that right off the bat. Type in firewall, bring up your firewall, then you can configure it. You can turn it on, you can set rules, what programs can bypass the firewall, you can look at reports, logs. If you turn that on, it'll change the status. Incoming, you can deny, allow, or specify which rules or which applications you're going to allow to bypass the firewall. Once you've got that set up, you can just save it and close out. Now, if you're somebody that's going to be using LibreOffice or other things like that to get work done, and you're going to be working amongst people that are still locked into the Microsoft world, what you're going to want to do is make sure that your documents can bypass between those on Microsoft and you on Linux. So what you'll want to do is just go to software. You want to do a search TTF dash MS and you'll see TTF MS fonts. Go ahead and click that to download. And then you'll want to go up and also click TTF windows enter. You'll have two pending operations. Click apply and it will install all those fonts for you. That way, if you're working on LibreOffice or FreeOffice or whatever office you're working on in Linux, when you email documents back and forth, they will match up with those you are communicating with. Now, if you're somebody actually using a SSD, you're going to want to activate Trim. Trim is a program that helps to clean blocks in your SSD to make it more efficient and to extend the SSD's life. Many computers today have an SSD, so this is definitely something you want to look into. It's a real simple command. All you got to do is come down here. Open up terminal, type in sudo system ctl enable fs trim dot timer. Once you do that, hit enter and it's activated. You're good to go. You don't have to worry about it anymore. One more thing. Let's close out of this. Let's go over back to software. And what you'll want to do is click on installed. Go down here to Orphans. I don't have any. You'll want to check this ever so often, especially if you download and delete applications and software. 
you'll want to come over to the installed, go to orphans, make sure there's no files in here. If there are orphan packages, you can just select, delete them all, get them off your system. It keeps it clean and keeps it fast. And then last, but definitely not least, once you have your system installed, once you have the applications on it and you have it set up the way you want, what you want to do is make a backup. So go ahead and go over to your menu, type in time shift. Time shift will pop up. Now, if you installed it on the BTRFS file system, you'll want to click there. If you're on rsync, just leave it on rsync. And it basically tells you you're going to make a snapshot of your system. So click next. And what you will do, because I'm in a virtual machine, you will see that it's showing small, but yours will show your hard drive or your SSD and the size of it. What you'll want to do is take a snapshot. So what you'll do is click next. What the machine will do is take a snapshot of your entire system, applications, settings, all of that. So in the future, if you should have a problem or run into a problem, you can boot into a rescue USB, basically the one you just used to install this. So keep it around and keep it safe just in case. Boot into it, open up time shift, find your snapshot, go over here and click refresh. It'll say, are you sure? You click yes, and it will refresh your system back to a time when it was completely functional and all your apps and all your settings and everything will be brought back to your system and you'll be good to go. So that is pretty much the tutorial on how to install Manjaro Deepin on a desktop or a laptop. If there are any questions or there's something I didn't cover, please drop it in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Remember, if you're on a laptop and you're having issues with your mic, I will pin the video at the end of this so you can zip on over there and fix your microphone issues. Please do me a favor before you go today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links are in the description below. Thank you for watching my video and I will see you in the next video.